And he says, I'll just read it directly. He says, someone in the forums the other day spoke about using carbon fiber cloth held firm with water glass, sodium silicate, as a protective liner to a soft insulated core like CFB, IFB, or super wool. Wondering if you have tried this material. And it's a great question. It's a really interesting question to me. So there's a few parts of it that I'd like to break down. One is, is just the idea of using composites. Um, composites being, you know, a composition of different materials to gain the structural um, properties that you want. And then the other part of that question that I'd like to talk about is protection for the firebox because because I think we got two different things to talk about here. Um, so first and foremost, composites in rocket stoves. So composites, um, you know, the industry or the, the materials, um, I'm, I, 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 I'm going to make some of this up, so I might be wrong, but um, composites, you know, probably, I'm sure people have used that word forever, but it's come to mean essentially um, basic, you know, I'm sure it has a lot of various meanings, but to me, I always identify it with sort of the fiberglass industry. It, those were known as composites kind of since their, be, you know, since their beginning in the 30s or 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever it was, 30s and 40s, I think. And so they typically mean, you know, a, a, a plastic type resin. It doesn't need to be plastic, but a resin that, that, that will harden. Um, and then that's usually combined in a composite with a cloth material and you the composition of those two materials gives you really interesting um, structural material characteristics right the cloth you know is really um, durable in tension tensile strength it's hard to rip to tear to, to break apart this way um, and as soon as you encapsulate that in the in the resin it you know lends those properties to what now becomes a rigid material. So I won't go too far down that road, but just to kind of cover the basics of composites, that's usually what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a substrate, a, an underlying, um, uh, usually a liquid to a solid type um, material, um, and a, a laminate that's in there. Not a laminate, but a, a layer of, of, um, of cloth, typically. So the question is, have you ever used this material? And so the, the question is, you know, you guys are speaking about carbon fiber cloth in this question, but to be honest, I don't think that the carbon fiber cloth is really going to be significantly different in our use than any other um, mineral-based cloth, composite cloth. So fiberglass is silica. We use that in our stoves all the time. It'd be just fine. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. You can go way far down this road. And we have, I have in the snowboard world, you know, there's mica and basalt and, um, and uh, on and on and on. <laughs> flax, flax is a popular one in the, in the hippie composite world. Um, so our permaculture folks might like flax. Um, but at any rate, and and actually another one that we use pretty regularly in concrete composite is burlap because it doesn't need some of the temperature resistant characteristics so that's another example of composite using concretes and cloths and that's really common right you, as you see that a lot like actually you could say that our standard concrete and, and steel mesh is a composite of the same ilk so the question is, have you ever tried this material? And I would say, you know, that really the question should be, have you ever tried a composite? Um, because I don't think the carbon fiber is going to make a difference, make or break. Now, carbon fiber has certain characteristics in composites that make it a little bit different, unique to regular fiberglass, silica-based fiberglass, or flax, or basalt, or any of the other ones. Carbon fiber tends to be really, really stiff, fairly brittle. It doesn't have very good compression strength. It has pretty good tension strength, tensile strength. Um, and uh, and it has a real unique rebound, and those are all things that matter to like tennis rackets and and snowboards and stuff. But they don't matter much to us in um, rocket stoves. Now, what ceramic or uh, carbon fiber does have is really good abrasion resistance um, in a composite. So that could be applicable in a in a rocket stove. But I don't really think it is, and I'll get into why that is. But you know, they do use it as sheathing on the bottoms of boats that you might beach or things like that. So carbon fiber is really durable. Uh, to abrasion. There's others that are more durable to abrasion. Actually, flax is a really good one for that. Um, and uh, and Kevlar, of course. So we're all really familiar with that. That's probably the ultimate abrasion resistant composite cloth. Um, so, 
Well, I'm kind of really unpacking this question, aren't I? Um, the real question is, do we use composites? And so that's something that we've used a lot in rocket stoves um, with varying success. My very first uh, rocket stove videos with my 8-inch J-tube and my 8-inch riser that uh, many of you have tried. I know Belgian Gulch, you've used my riser. And in those first videos, I did put chopped fiberglass strand in there in an effort to kind of keep things from cracking, or if they did crack, hold them together using that composite concept of you know, putting fibers in there. And that's, I mean, we're coming full circle, right? That's cob. Cob is composite. Cob is mud and, and stuff that's going to dry, but it would crack if you didn't have fiber in there. So you put straw in there. So these are all really common themes in our masonry construction composite. Um, so let's break it down a little more. Carbon fiber cloth. I don't think you need to specifically use carbon fiber cloth. I don't think there's any advantage there in our applications because you're not, in my opinion, going to be able to build a true composite that acts like a fiberglass composite where it becomes really a monolithic structure and a homogenous material. I believe that because of our cementitious nature of our of our substrate, I guess you'll call it, I'm not sure what you would what the right word is for that, but for of the, you know, cement, the, the fiberglass, the resin, whatever that's um, carrying that cloth, my thought is that um, is that you're still going to get that stuff to it's going to be brittle we're not going to be able to overcome it's 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 real um it's it's low tensile strength and it's going to crack with the with the thermal changes and the cloth will hold it together so it won't go any farther once it's cracked so there's so there's some you know bulletproof stoves always learning he's asking about kevlar um so really what i'm trying to get at here let's i i'm really just kind of wandering around in circles and i apologize um i had to do have somewhere to go with this basically we use, and I think even Belgian Gulch did this, we use composite like around the barrel when we wrap it with cob. You know, we put cob up there and wrap some fiberglass around it. Gives it that structural support and makes the whole thing monolithic. Inside your stove, um, you know, I just don't see any reason to go to that trouble. I think ceramic fiberboard is lighter. You can just cut it to shape. If you don't want a square riser, you can do a five minute riser with a blanket inside of a, um, inside of a flue pipe. I, I just see this whole pathway as sort of being a bunch of um, messing around to get you no significant advantages. Now that's for risers and cores outside of the firebox. The second part of the question was, could we use something like this as abrasion resistance in the firebox? And, um, you know, that one, I mean, this one has a little bit of potential, I believe. Because, like I said, I do think it's going to crack, but I think the cloth would hold it together. I kind of think you'd just end up with, like, a big kind of crunchy sock in there. I don't, I don't think it would be a very good uh, core liner um, for a few different reasons, mostly just that like I said, the, any of the concrete materials you're going to put in there, even if it was refractory, if you make it thin to hold that um, cloth in there, and that's the only reason you want to put cloth in there is if you're going to try and make it thin. And so if you make it thin to hold that cloth in there, it's just going to, it's just going to be brittle and, and break. Even if it doesn't break apart, it'll crack. And if you make it thick, you don't need the cloth in there. So I don't, it doesn't make any sense really to me to, to go down that road. Um, and lastly, you know, those, those metal liners are really easy simple one and done um and i just i just don't see this kind of construction really being like i don't think you'd slide your wood in there smoothly i think you'd be banging on it if it was this carbon fiber and it, and it was um loosely captured you know it'd be like trying to stick your your firewood into a, a jacket <laughs> like it just bunch all around so it's got to be part of that composite I did see the images of some of the parts that the fellas made, and they were they were interesting, but they were very different um, in terms of what they were looking for. You know, we're just looking for a liner inside of a constructed thing. They were looking for some real thin, light parts to make rocket engines. You know, it's just a totally totally different goal, and and uh, frankly, I just I don't see it being useful. <laughs> I'll just say it like that. That's not to say composite and cob isn't useful. It's very useful. It's useful in a lot of places. Anytime you have big, you know, gaps to span or things to go over or around things to try and hold it onto. Um, fiberglass in the cloth is really helpful. And actually one of my favorite examples of composite is uh, our friend Pat Amos up there in, uh, in British Columbia who's been using um, scotch broom chopped up into strands as the fiber for his plaster and, and cob projects. And I, I just think those natural composites are, to me are really interesting. 
and uh, I'm much more inclined to be interested that direction than I am towards the carbon fiber. And I will say that that fiberglass chop strand I put into my mix a long time ago, you know, I really, I didn't, um, I do think it made a little difference, but I didn't find in the end that it probably was necessary. So I would actually probably just want to go away from all of these materials if I could to build my stoves. So there's the answer to that. Thank you.